All right, everybody, this is Ross. We're gonna be doing some up potting of some fruit trees here. I have some fig trees that I hold so dearly. And we're gonna be putting them in larger pots. And uh, I wanna give you guys every little ounce of knowledge that I have on this particular topic. We have ourselves our tree. Nice little fig tree that I rooted last year. So it's quite young. We just took it out of its uh, larger pot. I had it, and it took some damage here on its roots. I had it in a, uh, a pot with a couple fig trees actually. I had it had three in the same pot. And now I'm separating them. And you can see I've got at the bottom here some soil. And uh, I got it to the right height. That was, that was really the objective here. And we're just gonna stick this in. Lay it in there. Observe if this is the right height. And now we're just gonna fill this in. Now, the really most important thing that you guys need to know about these fruit trees, growing them in pots. First off, it's not really recommended. There's a lot of fruit trees that you can grow in pots. You're gonna have to feed them quite a bit. And if you don't wanna feed them quite a bit and be on top of this every year and put the time in, I wouldn't do fruit trees in pots. I just wouldn't do it. Um, also, depending on what it is, you're gonna need a large pot. Figs, as an example, can fruit in very small size pots and also at very young ages. They're one of the best container fruit trees. Another one that I recommend is a Morris Nigra mulberry. I'd also recommend some citrus trees. Um, a lot of them are on flying dragon rootstock, which makes them quite dwarf and they do pretty well in pots. You can do things that are more tropical like guavas. You may even be able to get away with uh, bananas depending on where you guys live. You need a large pot for that. Things like uh, star fruit. I have jujubes in pot, pots really successfully. Persimmons, blueberries work out really well in pots. There's a number of fruit trees that you can do it, but you have to be on top of the water and you have to be on top of the, the food because there's only so much nutrients in this pot. And the soil here that we have selected really is not all that nutritious. And you're not gonna really find a potting soil or a soil conditioner is what I like to use that is very nutritious. Because at the end of the day, the nutrition in this pot, it's only a five gallon size pot, guys. It's you know like 12 inches by 12 inches. The nutrients in here is gonna get depleted very quickly anyway. So the point is, is that you're gonna to have to come in here with some fertilizer, whether it's organic or inorganic, and you're gonna to have to feed these trees. Now the soil is extremely, extremely important because we're not going for nutrients, we're going for structure, we're going for air capacity. The soil has to have air capacity, it has to be able to penetrate that air down into the soil. It has to be sort of loose with bigger particles, well draining, because that air needs to go down into these pots and reach the roots. The roots need air, just like food and water. They also need air like us. And that air really helps prevent rot, promotes healthy roots, promotes a healthy tree, a healthy plant. So what I recommend guys is you guys get yourself a soil conditioner. This is the soil that I like to use. It's called Just Natural. And it's a soil conditioner, as it says here on the bag. And I buy this stuff in bulk. I use it every year. I use it for everything. I use it for seeds. I use it for plants. Uh, I use it for even in ground, amending the soil in the ground. I use it for my garden beds. It's great. I'm not promoting the soil, although I definitely recommend it. And I wish they would, uh, <laughs> I wish the brand Just Natural would contact me and have the, uh, have me promote their stuff. Now, the reason I like the soil so much, again, is that it has great structure to it, it has great airflow, because it's 50% compost and 50% pine bark. And that pine bark is well broken down. It's not big pieces that are like this. 
You don't want any potting soil, whatever it is, guys, that isn't well broken down. There's gonna be a lot of compost-based products out there that are claiming to be compost or even just a part compost, and they're not gonna be really well broken down, and they're not gonna do well for you because the soil has to break down before it can give your trees the nutrients that it needs. In fact, during that breakdown process, if it's not broken down, you have a lot of big pieces in here, those pieces are gonna steal away nutrients from your tree. So it's really important to find the soil. It's the absolute most important thing that you guys need to pay attention to is the right soil. Get yourself a soil conditioner. Forget about a potting soil, that's crap. You need something even more well draining. In terms of a scale of air and drainage, the order is probably I don't know, probably a garden soil or raised bed soil. Then you've got potting soils, which are more well draining, and then it goes even further well draining towards these soil conditioners, and that's really what you're looking for. You're gonna have extremely healthy plants that way. Now, we're gonna have to feed these trees. So what I'm gonna do right now, because this soil, as good as it is, it doesn't have a whole lot of nutrients, as I said. It doesn't even have the micronutrients that we want. So we need to amend this. We need to make sure it has the right pH. What I have here is actually some lime. Get yourself some lime. We'll throw in a little bit of lime. This will adjust the pH. And this will also add in some micronutrients in the form of calcium and magnesium. Fig trees love this. And we have to cover all of our bases, just like us as humans, guys. We need you know, vitamins and minerals. We need to cover all of those bases because we don't want to be deficient. If we're deficient, it causes problems in our bodies. It's the same thing with these plants. So what I'm gonna do now is add in a little bit of ironite. This has got some decent micronutrients in it. You can use things like green sand. You guys can use uh, things like uh, rock dust. You know, There's all kinds of products out there that cover all of your basic micronutrients in addition to your macronutrients which is your NPK right those are the three numbers on the bag so this is kind of it I'd also recommend here you could definitely depending on where you live think about adding some mulch on top of the soil this is going to cool down the soil temperature if you live in a really warm place think about getting like white pots not black because you need to cool down the soil the soil in the ground is quite cool because the earth keeps a stable temperature here especially if it's covered right if we have grass you guys have wood chips the soil is covered and then therefore is cooler in a pot the soil is above ground access to a lot more heat the sun's hitting the sides of the pot which are black which is warming it up so and a lot of you a lot of you guys are going to want to actually get a white pot and put down some mulch on top of your pots. Super, super important. Highly recommend it. Wood chips, anything you guys want. Um, in terms of the soil composition here, guys, some other recommendations I can make, because it needs to be a soil conditioner or something really well draining. There's some other products you guys can use. Mostly find yourself a good compost and you can make something yourself. Get yourself some rice holes or some bark um, I wouldn't use any wood chips. I wouldn't use any mulch. You guys can get yourself some worm castings, maybe some leaf mold, something that's really well broken down um, that's gonna add some of that drainage. Maybe you guys can get a little bit of, uh, you know, some, some type of sand, uh, some type of um, volcanic material, like a larger rock of some kind. Um, you know, play around with this stuff. You don't want to be lifting these things and making them too heavy, so that's, a, that's an issue. Um, I just pr really prefer this compost. Get yourself maybe even some worm castings and then add in some drainage with the rice holes or the bark and you guys will be good to go with pretty much every fruit tree that you guys can think of. I've tried it here. Make sure the pH is right, the nutrients are right, we're feeding our trees. And that's it, it's really as simple as that. And we will talk to everybody soon. Thank you guys for watching this one. If you enjoyed it, subscribe, and check us out on our blog, figboss.com, Facebook, and Instagram. Subscribe to this channel, 
and give us a share if you enjoyed it. We'll talk to everybody soon. Ross out.